Welcome to yet another edition of our podcast here at Humana People to People. I hope you're having a good day wherever you are around the world. Now, World Aids Day calls upon us to reflect, remember, and consider who we are in connection to HIV and AIDS journey, the challenges in existence, and to commit to taking bold decisions to end AIDS. In 2021, World AIDS Day is being marked under the theme End Inequality, End AIDS, End Pandemics. And as such, we found it fitting to look at how ADPP Mozambique, a founding member of Humana People to People, has been supporting the people of Mozambique to fight and reduce the spread of HIV. This year's World AIDS Day coincides with ADPP Mozambique's celebration of 20 years of implementing HIV and AIDS programs in various geographical settings of Mozambique. Furthermore, we've invited one of the ADPP Mozambique's health programs coordinator, Shepard Chimurambe, to be part of today's conversation on how they have carried on their HIV and AIDS program, what they have achieved, and what more needs to be done to keep fighting HIV and AIDS in Mozambique. Enjoy the conversation between Elton Chino Waita and Shepard Chimurambe. Good day, everybody. My name is Elton Chino Waita. Uh, I am working at Wana People to People, working with communications. Today is part of our tradition to bring to you some very conversations that focus on what Wana People to People is doing in development work. As we are approaching World AIDS Day, 1st December, we chose it right to look at uh, HIV and AIDS, the major group that has been for the past years uh, been plaguing some of the uh, countries in Sub Saharan Africa, of which Southern Africa was at the receiving end. HIV and AIDS, although nowadays it's no longer as, as challenging as it used to be, but it's still there's some existing gaps which many people. They still need support, they need to be assisted, they need also to be linked with access to HIV, AIDS, health services. Adbebe Mozambique is one of the 29 members of Mana People to People, which has been implementing total control of the epidemic, one of the prototypes of programs that Mana People to People has been implementing. Adbebe Mozambique has reached 20 years implementing total control of the epidemic, which has contributed to reaching out to more than 5 million people in Mozambique. Such kind of a celebration is worth actually taking a, a reflection on. So we have invited on board uh, uh, one of the total control of the epidemic program coordinators under ATPP Mozambique to help us uh, talk about what is total control of the epidemic, what is it all about, what has it achieved, how are they uh, working with the program, engaging the people in Mozambique who needs to be tested for HIV, who needs also to be linked to treatment, and what are the support measures they put in place such that the people, they could be part of the whole process of suppressing the HIV viral load such that they can achieve uh, nanny detection of this virus on testing at a later point in time, which is critical to achieve uh, a negative test, which is scientifically uh, believed to reduce the chances of further spreading HIV and AIDS. So without taking much of your time, I am going to invite our guest to introduce himself and tell us a bit of what he is currently doing. My name is uh, Shepard Chumurambi and I'm working uh, in Mozambique. Um, my main task is to uh, support the projects with technical support. Uh, I am a program officer, and what I do uh, in most cases, I interact a lot with all the project leaders and all those who are in the leading positions so that they know exactly what they do. I help them to plan, 
I give them that kind of support to, to have a good plan. What does it mean? And what does it mean to also um, achieve the agreed uh, uh, partners goals? And how can we do it in a good way? What are the strategies that we can use to, to, to reach in a good way the, 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 the donor agreed goals? So in most of the time, I'm, I'm, I'm giving the, the technical support and making sure that all the projects are, are doing exactly as what we have promised to the partners and to the community. I understand that BP Mozambique implements quite many uh, project types. Which specific project type that you focus on? The ones where um, you um, your, your, your leadership oversight on? As for me, I'm working with the health project as well as the project that are doing with um, agriculture. So health, we can say it's HIV uh, in most of the times, but it could be also malaria, it could be also TB. And then with agriculture, you know, we are also dealing with uh, fish where we are empowering the fishermen to actually, you know, fish in a good way and to have what all it means. And then we are also working with agriculture, like in general. Okay. So that's, those are the projects that I'm working with. Now, what we are going to focus on is, is actually going to be anchored on the health uh, component of what you work with, and HIV and AIDS to be in particular. What motivated sure. you to uh, join HIV AIDS prevention programs? Yeah, you can say I, I actually joined the HIV and AIDS program like in the year 2000, that was way back. And um, well, I, I had also a father who was working in a mine and uh, somewhere, somehow he was diagnosed to be having TB. Then I was that kind of a person who was uh, doing all the work because eventually he ended up not uh, doing anything for himself. So it was me who was taking uh, care of him, making sure that he's taking his medication and, you know, going with him to the hospital and all that. But uh, unfortunately, he, he passed on. And when that happened, uh, I started also having uh, time to read one or two articles uh, th that were talking about HIV and AIDS. And what I understood and the symptoms that I could actually see in those articles made me understand that somewhere, somehow, uh, there is a possibility that my father also died of it. And uh, when I heard about TCE, total control of the epidemic, I even told myself that I'm not going to relax. I'm not going just to sit down. I'm going to do something because I wouldn't want any family member, I mean, to, to, to get infected and at the end of the day uh, does not know what to do. So had, I, had it been that I, I knew in the beginning, probably I could have saved very well uh, the life of my father but you know my focus was not only with my family then it was also to the community at large I'm very sorry for the loss of your father so sure, sure. basically your father died from what you end up perceiving as some uh, symptoms that were pointing towards to being hiv uh, infection but you were not so much uh, informed on medical grounds that he was sure. actually HIV positive. Is that yes. correct? Yes, that, 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 is, that is very correct. That is very correct, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> how was the HIV AIDS situation back then as you conveyed to how it has become now? You can say there is a big difference because back then people had a lot of misconceptions. And, uh, you know, it was very unfortunate that all of us, we did not know until we, 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 we took, we, we were part of the program, we were part of the movement. And some of these misconceptions uh, actually made a lot of people uh, lose their lives. And uh, people were also ignorant, but maybe because they did not know. And then eventually, uh, you know, you could say in a family when a person is having HIV and AIDS and then that person is sick and some people used to think that, okay, maybe you are bewitched 
you know, that's, 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 that's African. People thought that you were bewitched. And you know, you could spend a lot of money going to the witch doctors, going to the prophets, and that was happening by then. But right now, when a person is sick, before they could do anything, we can see people actually take their family member to the hospital to find out, is it something that is uh, uh, scientifically or is something that you know we cannot say anything. So I think that's that's the biggest difference. And by then it was even difficult for people to go to the HIV and uh, testing facility. You know, I remember when we started, it was part of the program to mobilize people to accept and go for uh, voluntary counseling and testing. But nowadays you'd realize that people are going voluntary. You know, everyone wants to know their HIV status. Some are doing it for marriage, some are doing it for work, some are doing it for many reasons. And by then it was not the same situation. And now even when people are taking care of somebody who is sick, you know, the one, they would want to know what exactly is happening to that person, what kind of disease is the person having, so that they know what are the precautions that they should take to take care of that person who is sick. I, I understand the first project that you worked with, if I could remember from the introduction you gave, you worked with the, the total control of the epidemic, which was back then in 2000, that the first pilot program that you you were sure. a part of the of, of, of the pioneers. Uh, what does total control of the epidemic uh, mean, and what is actually the idea behind its its formation? Yeah, I mean, like its name is total control of the epidemic, and in this case, you know, the main ep epidemic that we are referring to is HIV and AIDS, and uh, the, the idea of the program was to make sure that we control the, 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 the disease. It means in a, a, a certain place where TCE is operating, then we don't have more people who are also getting infected because they know what to do. If we, they, 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 they are using protection, even if they have, then they know how to live positive, they follow. Uh, all the precautions, they are taking medication and they are in a position to say no to HIV. So, but now we just did not want to control it. And, you know, like in a halfway, we wanted to, to make sure that the control is totally. So it means no infection, no new, no new infections and no more spreading also infection. So that, that was the, the, the idea of the program. It, it is also a slogan that says, only the people can liberate themselves because the idea is not for us, as we were just implementers. We were just going door to door and talking about HIV and AIDS. But as long as the people themselves, they take that position to say, you know what? We don't want HIV in our uh, community. We don't want HIV in our uh, family. We don't want HIV or I don't want HIV. And when I take that decision as me personally, it means that I can be liberated from uh, getting infection or getting more infections when I have one. So the idea was for, for people to take that decision and do something about it. Now, uh, the first TCE, program that actually pursued this idea and this philosophy that pushed this slogan among the people that were seeking actually to equip the people with the capacity to take control against HIV within each individual's lives. It started in Zimbabwe, which is in, in Bindura district to be specific. Uh, upon its completion, you were reassigned to go and be part of the same program in Mozambique. Upon arriving in Mozambique and starting to respond to the same issues that you were facing in Zimbabwe, what were some of the uh, identical issues and what were some of the differences that you could have easily uh, faced as different between the HIV and AIDS, what was in Zimbabwe, and the HIV and AIDS 
challenges that were also affecting uh, Mozambique. If you can, if you can give your your your, your assessment on that. Sure. Um, you know what 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 was similar was a lack of education in terms of the HIV. You know, I I realized that most of the people they did not have all the information in terms of HIV and AIDS. There were very few programs, very few projects that were dealing with the same uh, um, issue. So that was one of the things. And then the other thing is like, I realized that in terms of culture, we, 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 we had the same cultures and same kind of beliefs. Like for example, you know, when I was in Zimbabwe, one of the things that we was also a challenge when we were in the field, it was about this uh, in, uh, when a, a brother has died and then the, the, the little brother also inherits the wife of so the deceased it's, brother. So if it's the area of wife inheritance. Yeah, wife, wife inheritance. And by then it was also not only like uh, uh, words, it was also happening like physically that you have to get and you know sleep with the same wife. You know, that, that was also happening. Then we also realized that when we arrived in Mozambique, they are also having that, the same type of culture. You know, they, 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 they believed in inheriting the wife. And there's also another belief that we got in the south part of Mozambique where when a, a, a brother has died and uh, after a year, then the wife should be cleansed. So it means that somebody has to sleep with the same wife. Uh, not knowing exactly what killed the other person. And, and when they are doing that, then they are also using some herbs, but they were not using even a, a kind of protection. So, you know, you'd also realize that this also, in other words, was also happening in, in, in Zimbabwe. So we had some same kind of beliefs. We had some, uh, we all lacked uh, uh, information in terms of HIV and AIDS. So that's, that was the similar part. So what role then did the TCE under Adbepe Mozambique played in responding to such cultural challenges that acted as drivers of HIV uh, spreading? Well, you know, when we are dealing with cultures, you don't just go in a community and, you know, say, okay, this culture is bad and you need to remove it. There are ways for, uh, for I mean, to do it. One of the things that we did is we had to find out, okay, it's, it's, it's part of the culture that a wife has to be cleansed, but are there other ways of doing that? And, you know, eventually we had to hear from the old people that yes, there's another way where sex is not involved, where you, we just use herbs and, and, you know, all this medication and they have to go this, they are through this process, but sex was not involved. And then, we, 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 we use that, you know, to, 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 to educate people that you can use that and what is the reason why we are saying that. So the, 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 the main thing that I can say with the TCE, TCE had what we call passionates and passionates are volunteers. These are the people who say, we want to do something. We don't want to just sit, but we want to help in the movement so that we control totally the, the, the HIV and AIDS. And you know, when we were also mobilizing these passionates, we were not looking at age. So it could be a, 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 a small kid. It could be somebody who is a, a teenager. It could be an old person. It could be a local leader. It could be uh, the administrator. It could be those people with influence. So we, we, we made sure that to, 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 for the people to understand, we have to do, uh, and, uh, we have to look at the people who have influential. That, that could be also a, a witch doctor they trust to speak about uh, the bad cultures and good cultures and why are they calling it great culture and what should we do in the community so that we don't get HIV because HIV is real. So I think that was the biggest strategy that we had to use. And I mean, using those people with influence to, to, to mobilize others. TCE is quite a broad-based uh, uh, program. If one is to ask, what are the 
major elements that are constituted by TCE in its activities. What would you say to such kind of a, of a request? Yeah, um, I think I, I talked about mobilizing people to know their HIV status. And that, that was one of the major uh, uh, activities that we, we were also implementing because we knew that a lot of people did not know their HIV status. And the idea was for them to know and be able to prevent themselves, to protect themselves, and not to spread when they have HIV. And the other thing, it was uh, using protection, you know, like the condom use. And we knew that some people, they know that, you know, when you want to indulge into sexual activity, then you used to, you have to use a condom, but they did not know how to use it properly. So TCE was there also to give them information of how you can use uh, protection and be able to be protected because some people were using it and then they get infected. And, and the other thing it was to educate each and every person in the community without looking at age, without looking at uh, tribe and whoever was there in the community, they have to know what is HIV and what they should do when they have HIV. So that is also like, you know, adhering to treatment. So that was also the other major activity where we would want, we, we wanted all the people who are HIV positive to know how to be protected, uh, to know, uh, I mean, how to take uh, the ARVs and be in a position to always uh, go to the uh, hospital and make sure that they are healthy is okay. And we also were including the, 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 the use of herbs so that they boost their immune system. We we're also talking about nutrition and there were nutrition gardens all over because we wanted also the same people to, 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 to boost their immune system by also eating healthy. And we were also mobilizing the same people in the community to start some income generating projects whereby oh, they should not also complain to say, you know what, we, we want to take medication, but we don't have money for transport. So the income generating projects were there to, 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 to help on that. So the people you know, had information and they know what to do. And eventually they also had money to go and you know, uh, visit the hospitals. So these are the major activities that TC was also implementing uh, at the ground. Now, after implementing all these other programs that you have been uh, indicating, in what way then has TCE impacted the people who, who were infected or were affected uh, by HIV in the areas that you were in operation within Mozambique? Yeah, uh, you can say, you know, I, I, I also talked about passionates. And I said, you know, when you're recruiting passionates, we were not looking at age, uh, what kind of a position a person is holding because we wanted everyone to be part of uh, that. So that really changes the life of the people. And in the campaigns that we are also con conducting, you'd also say people decided to take uh, uh, um, HIV testing. And, and, and when they did that, they could, be in a position to know that, okay, a wife could be positive and the husband is negative. And they understood what is that? The husband is positive and the wife is not positive. What is that? And they knew what to do. So I think with, with the people who are HIV positive, most, in most cases, they were adhering to treatment and they knew that treatment is for life. So they were not even stopping it they were continuing because they knew that this is for the rest of my life. So I think that's the biggest impact that we did because people were taking their medication without stopping and people wanted to know their HIV status and people were also mobilizing each other because remember I said only the people can liberate themselves. So they took that action. Now inequality is becoming a major issue that is emerging in the fights uh, against the AIDS, against the social injustice, against the economic and legal <clears throat> injustices 
which are associated actually with breaking the existing barriers, which are there uh, making it difficult actually to end AIDS. In your own assessment, how do you see the connection between HIV AIDS and poverty? You know, in other words, we would say to those who are poor, they were mostly, mostly the girls, they were indulging into activities that were no longer okay because they had no money. So they could eventually become prostitutes, commercial sex workers, because they wanted to have money and because they, because they, are, they were poor. And one of, of the things that we discovered in some of the areas, you could also realize that those people who could come to get a commercial sex worker or a sex worker would say, I don't want to use condom and I'm going to double your money. And we would also cases where we could hear that that uh, commercial sex worker could also say, okay, if it's like that, then I accept because you are also doubling uh, the money. So this is where you can say poverty also contributed. And I've also said TCE has, had to create some income generating project because we knew that whoever was positive were giving us the reasons why they were stopping, they were not, no, they were now defaulting is because they had no money to go to the hospital because some of the hospitals, they were, they were very far. They need to get uh, uh, transport to, to reach there. So when they don't have money and you are also HIV positive, then you know they were stopping, they were defaulting uh, from getting medication. So th that's what I can say is the relation. When people have no money, they don't have food, they don't have anything, then eventually with this HIV, and it affects more people with no money and they could die maybe you know you know in in, in a short time because they didn't uh, they don't have the means to actually help themselves but generally it's for 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 everyone you have brought in a, a very unique perspective which is about the uh, adolescent girls and the young women they form a bracket which in southern africa is being actually being uh, noted within some of the recent HIV AIDS studies and the reports that the young girls, the adolescent and the teenagers on the girls' side, they are more vulnerable, double, in terms of getting infected as compared to their peers, especially those brackets which are um, uh, 16 years going all the way up to 24 years. In what ways then has ADBP Mozambique responded to protecting, building capacity and empowering the girl child so that they can prevent themselves or they can take control against HIV infection? Uh, generally, you can say in TCE, we, we were forming clubs and some of the clubs were specifically for girls. And the idea was for the girls to have that information of HIV, to know that their body were very important that they should not just use it anyhow. They, are, they were also in a position to be educated, to, 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 uh, to be you know, self-reliant. Uh, uh, they, 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 they were taught to, to, to do the meds. They were taught to do the pots. They were taught to do some income generating projects so that eventually they get money. And uh, the idea was for them, if, if they are occupied and they have something to do, then they, they don't indulge themselves into those uh, sexual activities that will also uh, get them at the risk. And of course, you can say in general, as Mozambique, we had also a program that was called Girls Inspire. It was to inspire the girls. The project was to, 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 to make sure that a girl child is respected. She goes to school at least up to grade seven and she is in a position to, to take care of themselves. And they were also like forming clubs, uh, 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 the income generating project so that the girls had something to do and they make money at the end of the day. So, so you know, as Mozambique, as, as ADPP, we, we, we had also a lot of program with the girls because we, we know exactly that this is actually affecting a lot of them 
uh, when they are also growing up. And you know, with this peer pressure, you'd also realize that the girls could also see the other girl, you know, putting on very beautiful clothes and they would also want to, 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 to be the same. But then eventually they, they get involved into activities that were not uh, good to them. So we had programs specifically for girls to make sure that they are educated and they know that there is HIV. They know that there are a lot of kind of diseases that they should avoid. And even if they are practicing, they, they are sexually active, then they should use protection. At the Bepe Mozambique, if I remember well, it, it implemented one uh, or two programs with, which were so unique in appealing to the HIV AIDS uh, challenges that were targeting the key <laughs> population, which is uh, the commercial sex workers. You have earlier on alluded to how vulnerable the commercial sex workers are in terms of insufficient income, which end up exposing themselves to doubling up money such that they could avoid using safe sex uh, protection measures. Uh, I would like you to, to say a, a, a little bit more about how did such kind of a program op, uh, operated and what kind of an, uh, of an outcome did it have among the commercial sex workers in promoting safer sex, in ensuring that there is openness, in also ensuring that the rights of the commercial sex workers is respected. Yeah, sure. Um, we, 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 we have programs for sure that are also um, uh, working with the key population. Of course, apart from the, the commercial sex workers, then we also had the miners, the truck drivers, the uniformed forces, uh, that is the police and all that, and together with the commercial sex workers. And right now, as I'm speaking, we have a program that is called PASU, which is actually in Zambezia and, uh, and Gaza, that is the south part and the central part of Mozambique. And the program is working with the commercial sex workers. And what we do is, we, 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 we have activists who are trained to, 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 to work with the commercial sex worker and they go to the hotspot. That, that means they go to where the commercial sex workers are, are operating. And when they go there, you know, they go there full equipped. And, you know, sometimes we don't use uniform because at times we used to use uniform and people, the commercial sex workers were running out. But when you, you, you go with your you know, casual uh, attire, then they don't care. So you, you go there and then you have a very good discussion, I mean, interaction with them, where you, you discuss to the length, ah, no, I, I respect the work that you are doing and it's good because you are also making money to help your family. But at the same time, there's also this uh, disease that is called HIV. There are also like other sexual transmitted diseases and for us to prevent, we should do A, B, C, and D. So, I mean, the, the idea of the program is to educate all the commercial sex workers to do it safely. That is the main, and they also mobilize this, all the commercial sex workers to take uh, an HIV testing so that they know their HIV status. And one of the, 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 the strategies that we use is like when we are recruiting the activists we recruit the commercial sex workers. So it means, you know, you, 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 you send a frog to catch a frog. You know, a, a commercial sex worker goes to mobilize other commercial sex workers. And that way it becomes much easier because they know exactly uh, the life that they are having and they know exactly what they are passing uh, through. They know exactly uh, what to say to them. So these uh, commercial sectors are then trained as activists and they are working together with us to mobilize others. So it's like a, a peer education that is actually happening. And, and we can see the program is actually doing very well because we, 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 we can see the, the positive, uh, um, we, we get to know a lot of people who are positive that are also commercial sex workers. And they are adhering to treatment and they know what to do uh, when 
when when uh, things are not also okay. And they say no to sex without protection, period. Because they are educated and they know what to do. No sex without protection. That is quite no. a firm and bold slogan. For yeah. somebody to become a, a community a health worker and start to engage in uh, issues to do with somebody being HIV positive, it takes a lot of courage. How does TCE build confidence among the people it engages, the field officer, as well as those people in the community who are living with the challenges to do with HIV and AIDS, mostly those ones who are HIV uh, positive? Um, yeah, for sure, you know, when you, I know way back when we started TCE, we were recruiting, of course, the local people to, to, to work in their local communities. But you would realize that if a district is big, then you would realize that if I am from this village, then I would say, I want to work like in the other village, but in the same district. So it could be like 10 kilometers away from where I, 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 I was born and bred. So it means that this person who has decided also to be part of the movement, who is going to be trained so that they have all the information, then they, they go and work and stay together with the community where they are, they are, they are, they are working. Because we, we believe that when a person is at the center of the field where you are working, then you know exactly what is happening in that community. So, but we had also cases whereby somebody will say, you know, I was born and bred in this and maybe people will respect me or maybe people will not respect me. But we also had also a bunch of people who'd say, you know what, this is my community and I want to save them. I want to be part of that uh, movement where I change people's life. I want them to know that I'm educated. I have been, uh, I've been trained to know exactly uh, what to do. So some people will take up that challenge and say, I work in the village where I'm working in because I want to, to change the life of people. But some would also say, people will not respect me because they know me and, and um, they, 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 they will not really look at me as the other person. But of course, like what I said before, we had people who were passionate, who are local leaders who can support them. You know, who are we also nurses and doctors who can who are there also to support them. So I mean, the the the, the only way that was making people to be bold enough and work in their community is because they knew that they are not alone. They had a very big support from different kind of people who are also part of the community that would also want to change. So this is why it was even easy for TCE to actually work in every community because. It, we were not isolated. We were working together with the people that are in the community. Those yeah. local leaders, those yeah. which now, on the part on the part of somebody, uh, let's say that a field officer approaches me. I'm living with some emotional issues because I have I have gone to get tested and then I I, I discovered that I am HIV positive after a field officer has uh, talked to me and then I. I went through uh, the whole uh, consideration on my own and voluntarily I decided to go and took a test and I was found to be HIV positive. What does it take then for a field officer to get the person who is going through emotional pressure in that way, to open up, to have the confidence, the courage to say it out, to be open? Because this are, these are delicate matters. These are matters of privacy. How do you navigate sure. that kind of a tricky assignment? Yeah. Um, I, I like the way TCE was working, or uh, the way we were working as TCE. Because in a community, we, we were forming the positive living clubs as well. And some of these positive living clubs, they were not secret positive living clubs. They were people who were open, doing activities together. They had their income generating projects where they meet, 
they work in their uh, 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 maize field, they work in their nutrition garden, but they also sit together and you know be in a position to educate one another. And they will be talking about what and each and every person is feeling, what is the health, what is happening, what did you do to actually uh, overcome the problem that we are having. So they they interact, they exchange uh, the, the knowledge you know, into one another. So that, that was something that was actually also there in the community. So when somebody becomes positive, <clears throat> one of the things is like, they could also be part of that group, which is a positive living club. And they join that club and, you know, be in a position to know exactly that I am not alone. But also like what you were saying, the field officer, when, 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 mob, when a field officer is mobilized one to go for HIV testing, and then when the person goes to, to, to do the test, the field officer will also have to follow up on that person to know if the person has done the testing. And, you know, uh, most of the people, when we go again and talk with them, they, they open, okay, you've mobilized me, but this is now the situation, I'm positive. What can I do? So the field officer was, was not also working alone. There we are, we were working with the health team. That is the Ministry of, of Health. We have, we have uh, 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 nurses and you know the health techniques who are also uh, networking together with us. Then they do the follow up together with the field officer so that they give that kind of support that the person needs, you know, in a, in a, in a other, in another level. Then we, we were also creating uh, like here in Mozambique, we call them GAC. GAC, GAC is a group that, we, that, that, that is something to do with adhering to treatment. And, and that group is linked also to the health facility. That they have their meetings, they talk about HIV and AIDS, and uh, they also exchange who goes to get medication for, for the other team. Because normally GAC is composed of six members, or it could be less but it's composed of six members. So not every month that somebody has to go and collect medication. So you will collect your uh, medication after every six months. It means today, this month is me, the other month is other person as like, like that. So that you know, you are not always at the hospital. You, you feel free, you have time to do other things. So, so, so these are the groups that we're actually helping to make sure that whoever is positive doesn't feel alone because they get emotional kind of thinking because they think they are alone. But when they knew, they know that they have people around who are also positive, who are also like waking up daily and you know going to the field, going to work, and they know that, okay, I can also do it. And we're also creating what we call trios. Trio is a, is a, is a group composed of like three, three people. One of the people is the one who is positive, a family member, and also a passionate. And what is that group doing? It is also like assisting the person who is HIV positive, you know, in making sure that that person is taking medication. When there are health issues coming up, then the trio helps that person to, to go to the hospital, you know, to, 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 to make sure that, you know, that person is is having all what it means so that you know you don't get sick and you know you, you don't lose your hope. Now, TC is a program which started in 2001. Uh, now we are in 2021. It means it has uh, achieved actually 20 years in operation in, in, in Mozambique. When you count some of the notable uh, outcomes or impact which arose is part of how TCE contributed to the bigger pool of what has been uh, 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 targeting HIV prevention and other such other measures. What would you pick as some of the notable achievements of TCE over the past 20 years? Um, the the, the biggest part is information. You know, TCE was not leaving anyone. TCE was educating each and everyone 
So when you go into the community, you could hear kids singing about HIV, old people singing about HIV, they knew exactly what to do. So I think that, that for me is something very important that everyone knows that there is HIV. And the, 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 the other thing is like, a lot of people are flocking until today to know their HIV status for various reasons, like what I say, but they know their HIV status. It's no longer a taboo. It's no longer something that people will hesitate to go and you know, know their HIV status. And the other thing is like, whoever is positive is adhering to treatment full time. It means that all the people who are HIV positive, who are taking medication, adhere to treatment until one day they die. So this is also another way of preventing because everyone is taking ARVs, everyone knows what to do. And, and, and uh, the, 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 the rate at which the prevalence was, I, I mean, was before, and now it's totally different because a lot of people, they are practicing safe sex. You know, they, they, they no longer just go there and you know, indulge into sexual activities without protection. Everyone wants to protect. You know, you'd find people buying condoms, looking for condoms that are also free from hospital without any uh, uh, kind of fear or they are, they are no longer sh uh, shying to do that. Way back, it was even difficult, you know, to go and get condoms in a public place. But now you'd realize that people will say, hey, hey, I need condoms because I know uh, I, I need them. So it's no longer a taboo. So I think these are the impact that TCE actually brought even in the country. And that's what we are still going for. And a lot of people uh, I have been saved through that and they are still continuing. And one of the things that I can also say with the income generating project that we're creating by then is some of them, they are no longer just a club. They are now in an association. So it means they've been registered and they are now uh, having access to microfinance. And it's no longer a club that was also working on, uh, on uh, that, that were creating meds and I don't know what. But now it's now in an association that is dealing with HIV and AIDS and it's well known and it's also employing a lot of people. So we have various associations that were created with the people that worked with TCE, which is actually something uh, very important. And you could say ever since TCE started, in most of the field officers who were working with them, who were working with us, are, are, are in the uh, Ministry of Health now. And it's, 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 it, it takes me uh, like, you know, I, I'm proud of, of that as the person who has been also leading TCE that if I go in most of the hospitals, you would find that these are the guys who are working with the TCE that are also nurses and some of them are health technician and some of them are working in the lab, but they also talk about how TCE changed their life. And that's why they decided to say they continue working in the health department. And whenever we, 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 we are working on it, working with the uh, health uh, department, and sometimes the people who are working with us are the people who are working with TCE. TB is one of uh, a major health issues, which is affecting quite a number of people in, uh, in Mozambique, be it in rural areas, be it in some of the other uh, uh, congested suburban areas in, in, in some of the major towns, also in the mining areas. Uh, how is ADPP Mozambique integrating, responding to TB as a, as a problem? Because it's one of the major opportunistic infections which results in loss of life for those people who are living with HIV. Yeah. Um... Right now, we are happy as uh, ADPP because we have a big program. We call it a mega project. And it's, 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 it's working in four provinces. Four provinces. That is uh, Nampula, uh, Sofala, Tete, and Zambezia. And it, it is about TB. So it has employed a lot of people. And we have a lot of people who are working 
uh, with TB. And of course, like what you are saying, you know, TB is an opportunistic infection. And, uh, and, and, and it has this co-infection with HIV. And, you know, in most cases, when a person is HIV positive, they are, is, they are more likely to get TB because it's, it's actually a, a, an opportunistic infection that take advantage that your immune system has been compromised. And, you know, ADPP, you know, having that project, having that program for us, it's, it's really something because we know very well that there are people who are now having TB that is resistant. And, but because we have a program that is talking about TB that is in different parts of Mozambique, that is going door to door, you know, and making sure that those who are on treatment are taking their treatment until they are pronounced they no longer have TB. Because what used to happen is like when people are having TB and then they were mistaken uh, TB with other uh, diseases, uh, with the culture of belief, they thought they were bewitched. <laughs> but now because we came with the program TB and we were telling them what is TB, how does it affect you, what are the symptoms, and it's also curable. And people were like, oh, so what I have is not a, a disease that is coming from which crafts. It is a disease that is actually uh, affecting me that needs to be uh, protected or that needs to be cured. So they go to the hospital, the activists are together with them. They take their medication. They do the follow-up until the person is pronounced not to have TB. So I think the program is actually helping a lot because most of the people in the rural parts did not really know that it is TB. They confused it with other types of disease. And now because they know they are getting uh, cared of and they are also like, getting well and they are back uh, their normal life so yeah that's, that's how, that, yeah that's what how, we how major problem is multi drug resistant tb in in in, in mozambique and what have you done to ensure that the tb that is has grown to be tougher to the to the normal regime of drugs, you can actually go an extra mile and identify it as well as uh, bring or initiate those ones who are carrying the TB infection. Yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, the reason why we, we, we have such a program is, is because uh, statistically looking at uh, what it was happening in, in, in the provinces that we are working on, there were a lot of TB cases, there were a lot of uh, um, uh, resistance, you know, the TB resistance cases is because, you know, what, 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 what the people were doing, some, some of them could start treatment and eventually along the, the, the line, then they stop. And, you know, that also causes uh, um, uh, some people to have this uh, resistant type of TB because you know you 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 people were no longer taking their medication like they are supposed to be. And when we came up with this program, when we have people at the ground who are every day going door to door, mostly visiting those uh, households where we have uh, TB cases, then these people are educated. These people are are given information, the correct information about when, when you have TB, this is what we have to do. And it's not only talking with the person who is taking medication, but it's also talking with the, the, the family members so that they know exactly what kind of help is this person needs. So with that kind of, and, and the good thing is like TB is a program that works hand in hand, like in on daily basis with the health uh, with the Ministry of Health. You know, you, 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 you will not even say we have a case of TB when a person is not gone to the hospital, when a person is not actually uh, taking his, his sputum and they 
you know, all those process of uh, the lab and until the person is said to be TB positive. So you see that it's 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 actually a, a full package. It's, it's it's involving everyone. It's the health team together with our activists and like, like on daily basis working together to make sure that whoever is having TB is is treated totally. So they 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 move with that person until the person is pronounced not to have a TB. Mozambique is one of the least developed countries. It means that the burden the government has to deal with in terms of responding to issues to do with education, to do with agriculture, food security, among other areas, is quite huge. Now, how do you support the government in terms of uh, providing the necessary health institution supports, which, which in, in the areas of, for instance, the vital equipment that has to be there at some of the health centers, because it's one, one thing to mobilize somebody to go and get tested. And it's another thing also to have it, the tested, the, the, the spartan testing undergoing appropriate equipment that has the capacity to detect it. I guess maybe in some of the clinics, in some of the other uh, 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 health institutions, they lack such kind of institutions. How do you come in then with such kind of a huge program and also supporting this other gap? Yeah, for sure. We, we knew also when, we, when this mega project was started that, you know, we create a lot of demand you know, at the health facilities. And because we knew that this was also part of the package when a program, a program like this was, was also formed, that it has to uh, purchase some uh, equipment like uh, the one that they call the gene expert. Yeah. This is a, a machine that they used to detect. So most of the, 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 the hospitals around were, were also, uh, given these machines coming from, from, from the program that we are actually implementing. So like what I say, we know we, we, are, we, are, we are exchanging synergies and we are also providing these machines to the Ministry of Health so that it caters for the people that are being detected to be having a, 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 a TB, but are working hand in hand and we are providing uh, these uh, machines in different kinds of hospital. Because we knew very well that, you know, there is a big demand and when we don't have that, then we are not doing anything at all. Over the years, for the past 40 years, uh, there is actually wide recognition that HIV and AIDS, it has now gone down from a life-threatening disease to become a manageable disease. Although that is the case, there are still existing gaps, there are still existing challenges. There are pockets which need a response. There are some people who are still facing difficulties to do or associated with HIV AIDS. Now, how has TCE aligned itself or been adjusted such that it's better positioned to re to respond effectively in meeting these new challenges, the emerging gaps, what is now the tendencies that are associated with HIV AIDS? We are no longer having this type of programs where we go door to door. Uh, even if we go door to door, but it's specific because we have programs now who are, uh, which are also visiting only the, the, the people who are positive only the people who are positive. Of course, to, to, to avoid discrimination, what happens is like we, we create a camouflage type of approach whereby we reach uh, four or five houses, yet we know that the house that we want to reach is this one because we have somebody who is positive. And, and, and why we are reaching there at a household where somebody is positive is it's because we want to, to talk with the, the, the contact person. Now we want to talk with the person who is positive and be able to say, if you are a husband, then your wife should be tested as well. 
if the wife is also tested, then uh, that that baby who is under five years or uh, five years old should be also tested because they 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 are prone to get the the virus. Uh, you know, sexual partners, yes, they get the virus, but also the kid, the small kid who is also there, who is below five years, who is below two years, should also be in a position to to get tested because that 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 child is always together with the mother or the father so we, we these are the types of programs that we are doing so we make sure that these contact person direct contact person are tested and they are also adhering to treatment so basically tc is becoming much more uh, targeted it's becoming it's, it's moving away from the the general uh, approach of reaching out to a large population of people, but it's becoming a much more specific into whom does it want to engage in its quest to respond to the emerging needs of HIV and AIDS, if I got you right. Now, I would like you to, 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 to explain a little bit further into what does it mean this UNAIDS 95, 95, 95 targets. What are they? And how, how does TCE relate to them in terms of contributing to such kind of, 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 of the global targets within Mozambique? Yes, uh, we, we want 95% of the people to know their HIV status. It means that these people, they are mobilized, they know their HIV status, and they are aware of, of what it means. And then when we have these people who are, they know their status, the 95%, then we also say the 95% again should adhere to treatment, should have access to a RVs. So that's that's the idea of 95, 95, 95. Now making sure that you know all the people have thorough knowledge about the testing and they are taking RVs, but they are also like having a virus that is undetectable. So in what way then is TCE aligning itself in contributing to this UNA 95, 95, 95 uh, targets to end AIDS by 2030? Well, we, we are doing we are doing testing. That's one thing. We, we have uh, a lot of uh, activists who are trained to be to do the testing. So we, we are testing in the homesteads, like through this program that I've been saying, when we are testing the contact, we are also contributing to that, you know, where everyone knows their HIV status because, you know, this, this type of testing is done at home. It's no longer that kind of test where you go to the health facility. And then, of course, when we refer the people to go to the hospital, and then we also make follow-up of those people who have been tested, who know their HIV status, who are also taking medication, so that they adhere to treatment. They don't even stop going to the hospital whenever they go. So that's 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 how we are doing as a program. So to make sure that you know we are also contributing to the ninety-five percent uh, target. So among all these three major pillars of the ninety-five or ninety-five percent of the people who do not know the HIV status, actually they know their status. Ninety-five percent of people they are enrolled on. Uh, on treatment, those ones who are living with HIV virus. 95% of the people who are living with HIV virus, now they have their virus uh, suppressed up suppressed. to zero detection, as we have alluded to. Among the three pillars, which, which, uh, how, what is the state of, uh, of, 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 of affairs when you consider how Mozambique is, 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 is doing? Is it possible that by 2030 it is going actually to achieve those those three pillars. Well, uh, when we started TCE, we were going for total control of the epidemic. I mean, we were not going for half, but we were going for total. And that's, that is still what we can do when we are talking about HIV. We don't doubt because we know that we are not alone in this. We have a lot of organizations who are also doing the same thing. And together, we can do it. And if we continue also saying only the people can liber liberate themselves, then I, I believe 
we can do it. We continued educating people. We continued talking about HIV until now. It's no longer a big issue. So we, we believe that by 2030, everything is going to be totally different. We are going to get the 95% because people are no longer complicated like before. We are no longer those people who believe in witchcraft. That whenever you are sick, you are bewitched. We are a different generation now. When we, now we know that, okay, when I have malaria, it's because mosquito has been uh, biting me. When I have TB, it's because there is a bacteria. That's what now we are. That's the kind of people that we are talking about now. So I, I, I definitely believe that we are going to reach it. Yes. COVID-19, it is a current problem that is affected different sectors globally. There is no country that has been spared by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. How has it also affected uh, ADBP, Mozambique's HIV AIDS? Yeah, like in any country, you know, um, uh, the activists, because they are going door to door, there's, there was a time they were stopped from going door to door. So, you know, that, that actually was a big bomb, should I say. One, because we were also protecting our activists from visiting, you know, different kind of households in the type of the uh, pandemic. And at the same time, uh, we were also protecting the people who are also in the community that this person goes door to door, you know, meeting different people and then eventually comes at one's homestead. So that was a dangerous situation. So that was also avoided. So we were no longer going door to door. So the, the, the type of communication that we were doing now was totally different. We, we embarked much on communication uh, um, via uh, telephone because with the programs we have now, uh, when we have a list of, uh, of, of uh, people who are HIV positive, uh, we, we, have, we give the, the, the activists uh, communication so that they contact the, 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 the people who are HIV positive. So first, before they go, they, they make a phone call and you now they agree when should they meet the person. So we, we embarked much on this type of communication where we, we made some follow-ups through communication that are, you know, on Wednesday, you should visit the hospital, that's your day and what, what. So these are the type of communication that was happening down there. It was no longer house to house. So can we say that kind of communication is it the same when also a person is visiting? To some extent, no, you know, because we used to communicate and then eventually we reach at the household. But when you are dealing everything with the phone, it's no longer different because, you know, you push somebody through the phone and then the person decides not to go there. And, you know, you cannot do anything but still communicate through the phone. So that, that is what was happening and it, it really changes everything. Even us who are working in the NHQ as, as program officers, we, we, we were no longer going to the projects, I mean, like visiting them, so to, to, to give them support. We were writing emails, you know, uh, writing, uh, uh, creating pamphlets that we were sending to the project so that they can be used uh, 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 where they are so that they get the information uh, about the pandemic. So it was totally uh, different than, you know, when you are visiting door to door, but we did not stop. We, we were doing something whether that was virtual, but it was helping. Thank you very much, Shepard, for sparing a moment, and then we would have this conversation. We are very much inspired by how ADPP Mozambique is responding to the challenges of HIV and AIDS. 20 years of being together with the people of Mozambique, responding to such life-threatening disease evolving over the years to become a manageable disease together with other partners, together with other organizations, contributing and supporting the government of Mozambique, especially the Ministry of Health. It is actually 
a contribution which is worth celebrating. I have no doubt that from what you have been uh, doing over the years and what you are still focusing on, you will achieve the objective on uh, making it possible that only the people can liberate themselves from HIV AIDS, the epidemic. That was Shepardy who joined us from uh, Mozambique and he has been part of our conversation. From Humana People to People, we will continue bringing you more of such episodes where we focus on what is going on within our uh, uh, projects. How are we engaging with people, supporting them so that they transform their conditions, they fight the dehumanizing conditions, which is contributing to uh, creating uh, poverty, which is contributing to underdeveloping them. We stand together with the UNAIDS on World AIDS Day on the 1st of December, as we are supporting the theme and inequalities and AIDS and pandemics. From myself, Elton Chinowaita, and everybody who has been part of making this uh, uh, development uh, possible, I say thank you. Thank you.